Hi, Joy. Oh, hi, Linda. How are How you? Are, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thanks. Excellent. I'm sitting outside, so I'm happy to be outside. <laughs> Very nice. <sighs> and hi, Gary. Hello, Gary. I guess he's on mute. Yeah, he is. Yes, I was. How, how many times is that spoken in a Zoom meeting? <laughs> Isn't it true? <laughs> yeah. You're on mute. You're on mute. You're on mute. There's always something to do in Zoom. Hi, Sean. And Karen Hi. and Beth. Hello. I see y'all are there, too. Hey, Hello. Karen. It's good Hi. to see you. To How's see everyone you. doing? Hi, Linda. Good. 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 Thank you. Hey, hey Beth. Hi. So good to see everyone. I love seeing faces more so than just, you know, names or pictures. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. The mic is joining. He has a picture of the stupa. That's nice. Mm -hmm. That's what the program host is as well. I turn off my video. There it is. Yeah. There There's are. the stupa. Very pretty picture. It's so photogenic. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we all are supposed to go get a picture of ourselves like that to put on <laughs> when our camera's off. Yeah. It's nice, you know. I don't think I did that. <laughs> What I see is everyone's names. So I'm not sure if like nobody put the picture. Although I see Mike, Mike has a picture of the Supa. So yeah, mm -hmm. you can add a picture. That's great. If not, it's not a big deal. It shows your name. Mm -hmm. We'll get started in just another minute. Um, it's seven o'clock now, but we'll give it just another couple minutes. I wanna make sure the streaming is working. There's Robbie. Hi, Robbie. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, let's wait another couple minutes. Uh, yeah. We've got, well, yeah, 11, but that includes me and you, Robbie. Okay. Make sure the screen is working. All of us are on YouTube, by the way. Once uh, Robbie starts, I'll spotlight him. So it's just him. <laughs> so smile, you're on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't want to be on YouTube, turn your video off. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Should have warned you. Uh, I warned, let's see, I think Gary and uh, Tracy were already logged in when I did give that warning. But then I, I didn't do it after everyone else joined us. I'm on Zoom, not YouTube. Well, we're on both. Oh, okay. Oh. So we see you, all of us who are signed in on Zoom see you right now, but we are live streaming on YouTube as well. So anyway, okay. pull that up. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so we do, we do live stream, but normally I just will highlight um, the instructor and tonight, of okay. course, it's Robbie. Yeah. Thanks. That's good to do that because the Sunday service, they left it on YouTube. I, I didn't get to watch it until later and they left it in a bunch of little tiny boxes. So I couldn't uh -huh. see Gesha Gellick. Oh. I mean, I could see him, but. Uh-huh, you know. but he was just a little box. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, no, I, I will spotlight Robbie momentarily whenever he's ready. So Robbie, uh, whenever you're ready, I think we could probably yeah, go ahead. I think we can go ahead and start. Okay. okay. Do you have any announcements, Linda, anything? I do not have any announcements, okay. unless anyone has any questions or anything. Hopefully everyone has found the materials by now. If not, just let me know. Okay, great. Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Discovering Buddhism, the module on transforming problems. This is the second of six sessions. And each session is going to run about an hour, because I think otherwise we 
risk running Zoom fatigue with the lives we're leading these days. And I think this is material that we can cover in short segments. Um, so this is the second of six. Uh, and I just wanted to re remind people, please check out the Kadampa Center webpage. There's a lot going on, uh, though not at the center itself, but you're certainly welcome to come to the center and circumambulate the stupa or just sit there and uh, meditate quietly outside. The After we finish this last class in the uh, early August, starting the very next night, the next Tuesday night, there will be six nights of teaching online by Don Hendrick and Kadampa Center is sponsoring these. And if you don't know him, Don Hendrick is a wonderful teacher. He's a very serious study of Tibetan Buddhism and he normally travels the world teaching at different centers, uh, but he will be online for, he's based in Santa Fe for six nights starting Tuesday, right after this class ends. So uh, I'd highly recommend that. So uh, Linda, can we pull up prayers? And let's see, is that a possibility? We'll start off with some prayers and then we'll follow that with some meditation. I can't hear you, Linda. You're, you're muted. Sorry, Robbie. I'm having a hard time finding them um, while Zoom mm -hmm. is open. Would it make sense? Would it not be too crazy to do the meditation first? And while y'all are meditating, okay. I'll find those prayers. Okay, we'll do, do it a little we'll do backwards. That. I apologize for no not problem. having those up and ready. Okay, that's fine. We'll start with some meditation. Uh, so I think most of us are sitting in chairs rather than on cushions, or maybe a few of us are on cushions. But uh, we begin by checking our posture. If we're sitting in a chair, our back is nice and straight, not leaning back. Our head is straight on our shoulders, maybe just a couple degrees in front of the vertical, but not tilted to one side or the other. Our eyes are either very lightly closed or just slightly open. Our lips are, lips are closed, but not clenched. Our tongue is on the roof of our mouth behind our upper teeth. Our shoulders are down, not up around our neck, but relaxed and a little bit back, so our chest is open. Our upper arms are away from the sides of our body. Right hand is on left with thumbs touching, slightly below the level of the navel. And our feet are flat on the floor. And if we're sitting on a cushion, the posture is similar. We're sitting to the front of the cushion and our legs are crossed in a position that we find comfortable. So take a minute, just scan the posture, starting from the top, working down, 
identify any areas of tension or discomfort and address those now so they don't become a problem during the meditation. And having established our posture, we begin by taking three deep breaths from the abdomen, the stomach muscles expanding on the in-breath as our diaphragm is pulled down, so our lungs are completely filled, and then the muscles contract towards the spine on the out-breath. So do three deep breaths like that. And now we take a minute to set our motivation for the meditation and the discussion that's to follow. And whatever motivation has brought us together this evening is fine. But it's said that the most powerful motivation is what we've referred to as the bodhicitta motivation. The wish specifically to become enlightened so that one can benefit others. So for just a minute, let's think, I wish to become enlightened so I can help others. And it may seem a little unnatural or forced, that's okay. Because our mind is infinitely flexible and pliable. Just thinking that thought is in a very subtle way starting to reprogram our mind. The mind has no fixed qualities. So the mind is really the thoughts. Whatever we think, that's what our mind is. So we're going to think the bodhicitta motivation for a minute. And having set our motivation, we now begin the actual meditation. It's a very simple, but not necessarily easy, concentration meditation. The mind on the breath. We place our mind on the physical movement of the breath in and out through the openings of our nostrils. Nothing more, nothing less than that. Just direct experience. When the mind wanders away, we bring it back to the breath over and over again. And that's the meditation, and we'll do that for the next eight or ten minutes.
And now we can end our meditation with a brief dedication. We think may the positive energy that I've created by sitting quietly like this for the past few minutes, may that make an impression on my mind that is not lost, but will ripen in the future for the benefit of all sentient beings. And you can relax your concentration. Okay, so that was a very simple concentration meditation, but that ability to concentrate, to keep our mind on a chosen object or topic is very important in all the other meditations we do. Uh, and it's a quality that it's useful to develop as we go through the various modules in uh, Discovering Buddhism. And I think you'll see pretty rapidly that it is something, a quality that can develop in your mind, the ability to concentrate. So do we have prayers, Linda? We do. Are you ready for me to pull them yeah. up? Yeah, I'll read them. Everybody else can read them mutely because otherwise the feedback and the cacophony is a little bit intolerable. So... Let's start with, I'll read Refuge and Bodhicitta, three times in English, followed by the Four Immeasurables, three times, and then the Short Mandala Offering. And these are to help, again, just normally we would do these before the meditation, but again, they're to help set our motivation and prepare our mind for the discussion that's to follow. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened, to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By the merits I create through listening to the Dharma, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By the merits I create through listening to the Dharma, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By the merits I create through listening to the Dharma, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings be inseparable from the happiness that is free from suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity free from attachment for friends or hatred for enemies. May all sentient beings have happiness in the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free from suffering in the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings be inseparable from the happiness that is free from suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from attachment for friends or hatred for enemies. May all sentient beings have happiness in the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings be inseparable from the happiness that is free from suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from attachment for friends or hatred for enemies. And Mandala offering. This ground anointed with perfume, strewn with flowers, adorned with Mount Meru, four continents, the sun and the moon, I imagine this as a Buddha field and offer it. May all living beings enjoy this pure land. Idam Guru Ratna Mandala Kam Niryatayami. Okay. Thank you, Linda. And we'll be doing those each week uh, at the beginning of the session. Um, so this module is Transforming Problems, also known as Mind Training, uh, also known as Thought Transformation. This is a very large category of Buddhist teachings that fall under the heading of what's the Tibetan word for it is Lojong. That's one word, L-O-J-O-N-G. And those are the thought transformation teachings. And as I said last week, I think these are very 
practical and useful teachings that we can really put in into practice tonight or tomorrow. It's not like we're trying to develop bodhicitta for all sentient beings, but we're trying to change, or we're not trying, we are, we're working on changing the nature of our thoughts, replacing our thoughts that don't work, that don't make us happy, that don't make us of benefit to others, with thoughts that do make us happy, that don't cause us to suffering, and that help us to benefit others. And we can do that because if we go back to the first module, mind and its nature, we develop some understanding of how the mind is really lacking in any fixed qualities. It is infinitely flexible, infinitely pliable, and nothing there is there permanently. Anything that doesn't work or causes problems, no matter how tightly we think it's um, part of ourselves, it's not. It's just a bad habit, if you want to simplify it to the nth degree that we've developed of thinking that I am an angry person, or I am a depressed person, or I am a jealous person. No, we're just a person who has that type of thoughts over and over. And we have trained our mind to have those thoughts. They don't occur randomly, they occur because we practiced them in the past. So when we train our mind, we can train it to have thoughts that are more effective, that work better, that cause less agitation and upset in our mind and cause us to be calmer and more at peace with the world and more closely related to those around us. Am I, Linda, am I too dark? Do I need to turn some light on me? Yes, no, I not, would. That looks better. I'm not it's, asking for a spotlight or anything. But, <laughs> it is know. more, it is darker on you okay, yeah. than what I'm seeing on so, Zoom. So that's, that's good. Yeah, I'll move this. Might be more in front of you than behind you, actually. Yeah, okay. There. Okay, now I'm ready for my close-up. Can you turn it so the bulb's not facing the camera? Yes. yes. Yes, that's much better. Okay, how's that? Okay. <laughs> Good, thank you. Great. I'll try and remember that for next week. So there are many, many uh, teachings on thought transformation, as I said. It's found in the original sutras of the Buddha. But if you've been Kadamp coming to Kadampa for very long, you know that we almost never actually study the actual sutras. We're reading, we uh, tend to st study commentaries on the sutras and commentaries on the commentaries. So the main text we're using for this class is the Eight Verses of Mind Training by Langri Tampo. And this was written about 1100. And it's very short. Each verse is only one sentence. Uh, and it's in the uh, Discovering Buddhism readings for this module in the first section. His Holiness the Dalai Lama discusses those and gives one translation of each verse in order. And Langri Tampo in particular is uh, incorporating teachings that were given by his predecessors, Shanti Deva, who wrote the Guide to the Bodhisattva's Way of Life, which I mentioned last week, and also teachings of Lama Atisha, who uh, was the great Indian. Uh, practitioner who took the teachings of the Buddha back to Tibet after they had uh, decayed and fallen into extinction. So in this module, we're going to go through Langri Tampo's Eight Verses of Mind Training, a very short text, but very pithy. And each verse uh, really contains a lot. So last week, the verse that we talked about was Determined to accomplish all success, I'm reading his, the translation in His Holiness's article here, I shall always practice holding dear all sentient beings who are more precious than wish-fulfilling gems. So determined to accomplish all success means, basically means becoming enlightened. I shall practice holding dear all sentient beings 
who are more precious than wish fulfilling gem. A wish fulfilling gem is that mythical object that could fulfill all our material desires of this world. So you're saying here that every living being, every person we come into contact with is more precious than a wish fulfilling gem. Why? Because they give us the methods, the opportunities to become enlightened, okay? We become enlightened dependent upon others. We can't become enlightened completely wise and completely compassionate in a vacuum just with ourselves. Other sentient beings are absolutely necessary. If they are people like Geshe Gelek or Lama Zopa Rinpoche, they're necessary because they're guides, they're teachers. They are examples for us. They give us something to aspire to, okay? If it's our family and friends, they give us the opportunity to practice compassion, to develop our compassion, the wish that they be free of suffering. And if they're people that cause us problems, they actually give us the opportunity to develop patience, generosity. I mean, we can't develop patience when if we were just surrounded by Buddhas, okay? Uh, we wouldn't, there would be no impatience. So this is developing, changing our mind so that it thinks with everyone we meet, oh, I am so glad to see you because you give me the opportunity to become enlightened because dependent on you, I can become enlightened. Everyone we read about, oh, dependent on this person, I have the opportunity to become enlightened. Everyone we think about, so we relate to every sentient being with that attitude. And of course that doesn't come naturally. If we try to practice that, if we go through the day thinking to ourselves, it's going to seem quite artificial, uh, maybe even phony, and that's fine. That is perfectly okay. We can, it becomes, it can seem very intellectual or forced. That's okay. We are training our mind in what seems awkward, difficult, unnatural becomes natural with practice and actually becomes part of the way we relate to the world around us. So we can do this as we go through our day. Every time we see somebody think that. We can also do it in our meditation. Okay, thinking, bringing to mind people and saying, because of you, I will become enlightened. Dependent upon you, I shall achieve enlightenment. So we're training our mind to think of that way. And like anything, like learning to ride a bicycle, playing the piano, at first it's very awkward and forced. And that's okay. That's how we train ourselves. So that's the first way in which we can train our mind, according to Langri Tampo. Do we have any questions about that first verse? Did anything come up for people uh, during the week? If you can go into the chat and put your questions up if you have any. I'm not seeing anything yet, Robbie. Okay, well, we'll move on and at the end if people have questions, if they're just still formulating them, you know, typing them out can be a little bit difficult. Okay, the second verse of thought transformation. The translation is holiness the Dalai Lama uses in the readings is, wherever I go and whomever I accompany. So these things are always including everybody. Now that's not the way we start off practicing. We start off with the people that's easy to do these with, but the goal is to include every sentient being in these thought transformations. I shall practice seeing myself as the lowest of all and sincerely hold others dear and supreme, okay? Wherever I go and whomever I accompany, 
I shall practice seeing myself as the lowest of all and sincerely hold others dear and supreme. Another translation that I have. Whenever I come into anyone's company, may I regard myself less than everyone else and from the depths of my heart value others more highly than I do myself. So I think for most of us, this, is, this one initially is more problematic. Uh, and it's certainly, if we have issues with low self-esteem or self-hatred or depression, this may seem to be exactly the opposite of what we need to be doing or what we would like to do. Uh, so let's think a little bit about what Langri Tampo and the Buddha are saying here. Really what they're talking about is developing humility and combating arrogance, which I don't think uh, any of us, if we think about it, have, quality, have any objection to those. Arrogance is certainly a problematic attitude and humility, uh, you know, the humility, most of us tend to think um, that um, the, a degree of humility is good. Now, this may be, we can, it can be taken to extremes like any of these teachings. We have to go with the middle way. Uh, another way that this is talked about is seeing the disadvantages of self-cherishing, okay, putting oneself first, and seeing the advantages of cherishing others. And that's a word we talked about last week, this idea of cherishing and uh, hold the disadvantages of holding ourself dear and the advantages of holding others dear. And by, by self-cherishing, we don't just mean getting the biggest piece of cake when the cake is cut or uh, hoping to inherit the money when our distant aunt dies. But really, it's that attitude of when something doesn't go my way, the way I hoped it would, the way I was attached to it, my mind is disturbed. My mind is upset. It's that attitude of going through life and thinking things should either be my way or it's a problem. If things aren't going the way I think they should, that causes mental upset for me. And it's learning to accept that it's not all about me. And His Holiness the Dalai Lama is always bringing this up. He's saying, I mean, just look at the numbers. There's only one of you. There are countless others of other. So whose wishes, who's, who's more important in the scheme of things? The one you or the countless others? And of course the answer is, Others are more important in that there are more of them who have wishes and desires. So we think about that. We also think about that self-cherishing, this hope that I, this attachment to getting my way in things big, small, just the littlest thing, is a source of so much suffering for myself, okay? In fact, it is said that is our number one enemy. Our self-cherishing is the cause of all our problems. So we can meditate on that and habitually start to relate to other people with an attitude of humility, lack of arrogance, in fact even a wish to serve, okay? So it's completely eliminating eventually that self-cherishing and replacing it with the cherishing of others.
okay, that the wishes of others, I work to bring those about, of course, coupled with wisdom. And again, this is not to develop, you know, you are not trying to sit and develop self, low self-esteem. That's not the goal. We're not trying to hate ourselves. We're just trying to develop what is according to His Holiness the Dalai Lama, a realistic attitude that others are more important than me. And an understanding that by serving others, benefiting others, almost that leads to my own happiness. By cherishing myself, putting myself first, always trying to fulfill my wishes, I cause problems and suffering for myself, okay? So this is a huge flip from the way we usually think to put the others first, myself last, big things, small things. And again, this is one of those topics where it's going to seem very artificial, very forced, very intellectual, just a thought. I can think it here, but I don't feel it here in my heart. And this is where meditation brings it from here down to here by sitting with that quiet, concentrated mind that we've learned to develop it becomes part of who we are, not an artificial veneer, which it may be the way it starts. Now we're getting a lot of comments. So why don't we bring some of those up, Linda? I may not get, sure. we've got eight listed, I think. <laughs> yeah. I may not get to all of them, but we'll see, yeah. Some are just comments though. So, um, Gary says your explanation makes number two more possible and reasonable mm. as one must value themselves to feel capable of helping and caring for others. Yeah, that's an excellent point because this is based, don't forget, this is based on the assumption that we can become enlightened. Okay, each of us has the potential to become a Buddha. So we are not completely debasing ourselves here or saying that we're worthless or incapable of doing anything right. We have this enormous potential, but we have to use that potential in the right ways to develop it. Okay, so this is, yeah, that's important. This is based on a very real belief that I can become enlightened. Okay, good. Okay, next. And there's a couple about ego. Um, the first one is from Helen. It says, is self-cherishing the same as ego? Mm -hmm. I, I, I. Okay. And then do you want me to go ahead and read the other ego? Yeah, on that subject, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the first one is self-cherishing the same as ego. The second one is from Karen. It says, seems like to me all of this is about transcending the ego the mm -hmm. illusory separately ex existing self mm -hmm. okay uh great questions uh comments i don't know if i can answer them it depends on really what you mean by ego um certainly there is a conventional self or ego or i that functions in the world and that has to be fairly well organized. And this is part of our precious human rebirth that we have a mind that's well enough organized that we can actually sit and think about these topics. If we're, you know, have a serious mental illness, I think going, working on thought transformation would probably be inappropriate till some of those issues have been bought under, brought under control, okay? We need an ego that functions in the world, okay? That, you know, feeds this body and takes care of it. It's not like we get rid of I or self completely. We have to have a conventional functioning self. But I think Karen's point is well taken that we, when we develop a true sense of how things exist and don't exist, then the idea of self-cherishing becomes almost ridiculous. How can we cherish a self that really has no true existence? And that's part of the emptiness class, but we talk about that a lot. So it's really cherishing. At some level, what we're doing is cherishing something that doesn't even exist. 
the way we think it does. So that makes it self And that's really where the suffering of self-cherishing comes from, the ultimate source of the suffering, is that we're clinging and coddling and catering to something that really doesn't exist. And that's pretty pathetic when you think about it. But that's a delusion that most of us are still suffering on. So that's that's a good point. That's farther down the line than what we're going to be working with right here. But that's an excellent point. OK, next, what do we have? And then also, let's see, it says, I, I didn't feel comfortable to say I am enlightened by the people I don't like or let's say the people who were mean to me. Yeah. It's more, I, de I become enlightened dependent upon them. They are not the sole cause, but they are a necessary condition. And uh, it's not like they are enlightening you. Nobody else can make you enlightened, okay? You, that's work you have to do yourself. So I may have misspoke there and I kind of thought about that. Uh, I become enlightened dependent upon others, okay? But that's not the sole cause of enlightenment, but it is a necessary requirement, okay? And I think that was it. Um, although Sean did say, I found the meditation helped me to be more patient throughout the day. Okay. So I guess Sean's okay. referring to the, the week's assignment of doing okay. the, the meditation. Okay. Great. Okay, great comments. Thank you. That worked well. Yeah, I, I, I miss, you know, the back and forth in this format, but we make do. Okay, right. Absolutely. Me too. Okay, so now we're going to do another meditation. Okay. So let's see. Yeah, about, about 10 or 12 minutes total. So begin by checking your posture. And now three deep breaths from the abdomen. Now allow your breathing to return to its normal pattern. And take a moment to set your motivation for the meditation to follow. And having set your motivation, we now do a little bit of concentration meditation, the mind on the breath, coming back to the breath over and over and over again.
And we can notice that our mind is calmer, maybe a little bit clearer, but alert, not sleepy, more focused. And it's in this state that the teachings begin to move from just the intellectual level down to what in the West we would call a more heart level, a real integration into our being. So staying in that concentrated, focused state, I'd like you to bring to mind a difficult situation in which you found yourself recently doesn't have to be anything major, but just something that you found irritating or difficult or a problem or someone who got on your nerves. So bring a very specific situation to mind and what your mind was like in that situation. And now see if you can begin to understand how that upset that you felt at its root came from what we call self-cherishing, the wish to be right, or the wish that things turn out a certain way, or wish that certain plans come to fruition or the wish that the other person would change their behavior. See if how the upset that was in your mind, see if you see an element how self-cherishing was behind that. And just say to yourself, yes, that was self-cherishing. I accept that. I understand. Bring some calmness to the situation. And start to imagine how the situation could have been different if you had brought cherishing of others to play if that had been the motivating factor. Not that you were a doormat or acquiesced or even changed what happened, but that your mind that you brought to it was different. That you brought to it the mind of cherishing others. And just accept that, just be with that, cherishing others in that situation. Just accept that. And now we can end our meditation, do a brief dedication to ourself, acknowledge that we've made a positive imprint on our mind by thinking in these ways. And may this ripen in the future in the way to benefit all sentient beings. Okay. 
frequently said that when we're studying Buddhism, the three necessary parts are study, contemplation, and meditation. Study is actually reading the text, getting familiar with it, understanding what the words mean. Contemplating means, you know, thinking about it as we go through our day-to-day -day life. How does this teaching apply here? What does it mean in real life? Thinking about it. And then meditation, where we get to that calm, quiet place in our mental continuum, and we actually begin to incorporate the teachings into our way of thinking. So most of us, you know, we're starting off with the study and the contemplation, but as we move through that sequence, then it becomes more real, I think. So make sure you include all three parts in your study. So homework for this week is to finish reading the first section of the assigned reading, which is by His Holiness the Dalai Lama, pages four through 15. And um, ba -ba -ba, sit in meditation for six times this week. I'd say for 10 to 15 minutes, set your motivation, do a little bit of concentration meditation, and then really meditate on the disadvantages of self-cherishing and the advantages of cherishing others. And uh, do that for six days this week. And then we will meet again next Monday night. Let's see, do we have any more questions or comments? Like we have a couple minutes. Anything that we haven't gone through, Linda? You're muted. Sorry. You know. I know, I keep doing that tonight. <laughs> um, it doesn't look like it here. Let me just okay. double check the YouTube stream chat box and see if there's anything there. Um, no, I did. Okay. I have a comment from a YouTuber that said, hello and thank you, everyone. Okay. <laughs> well, if you, you think about during this week and you can bring comments and we'll address them at the first part of next week's session if you have comments or questions about tonight's material. Okay, here's something. I'm new. Can you, I can't see all of this. Uh, yes, um, Zenobi, if I'm saying that right, mm -hmm. asks, I'm new here, so what exactly is the reading? So if you look right above your comment, Zenobi, I've put to everyone that I will post the prayers. You might wanna just copy and paste that in somewhere else that you can access later because once we um, shut down Zoom, that, that will be gone. But I will post the prayers. Um, someone requested those. And another version of the eight verses of thought transformation um, on the Kadampa Center's website after class tonight. And what you need to do to get there, if you haven't been there before, is go to the Kadampa Center website, which is kadampa-center.org. And then go to spiritual programs. And then from spiritual programs, go to discovering Buddhism. This is why it's hard to find. From discovering Buddhism, <laughs> then you go to <laughs> discovering Buddhism materials. And from there, you can access the readings and everything else, any other documents, homework, and all kinds of things that I'll post there throughout this, the module. Um, just scroll down go past another list of readings for all of the modules. Keep scrolling down to 2019, 2021 documents and links. And there you will see all of the necessary documents and handouts uh, for this module. So if you do have questions, I did put my email address in there. You can reach me at program.db at kadampa-center.org. Okay. And there are a couple of references back to a comment by Naga. Uh, a Buddhist monk said, we can say every day in the mirror, I am happy, I am beautiful, I am kind. Uh, it has been one of my practices. Self-cherishing, question mark? No, I don't think so, okay? Okay, I don't think it's uh, putting oneself above others. Okay, now if one develops pride or arrogance based on those, uh, but I don't think thinking those thoughts is not self-cherishing. That's acknowledging our Buddha nature, as we mentioned, our potential for um, enlightenment. 
Yeah, so that's, uh, I don't see a problem with that. But of course, our thoughts are never pure. They're always mixed, okay? Uh, but the thoughts and those thoughts in and of themselves, not self-cherishing. Okay. And we have some others just thanking you, Robbie, and um, both uh, Carrie and Christine are watching via um, YouTube and they say, thank you. No questions, but thank you. Okay, well, thank you everyone. Stay thank healthy, you, stay safe. Okay, start transforming your mind and uh, I'll see everyone in a week, okay. And do check out some of the other wonderful teachings. Joy, it's good to see you, yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, hey everyone, good, yeah, great. <laughs> And, yeah, feel uh, free to turn on your your video and and or and or um, audio and say yeah, hi. Yeah, great. Hi. Okay, Mike, Mike and Karen and Naga and Lisa. <laughs> and, uh, yes, everybody's here. Great. Yay. Okay, good seeing all Thank of you. Take care. Stay Thank healthy. Thank you. So much. Bye. 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 Joining us. Bye. 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 And I will post everything tonight and momentarily. Bye, guys. Thanks. Bye. Thank you, Linda, for what you're doing, too. You're welcome. Thanks for tuning welcome. in. You, Makes everyone. it all worth it <laughs> to see all these smiling faces. Aww. Aww. Thank you. Thank Good you. night, everybody. Bye. 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 Good night. Good night.